All right, Vander, how you doing? Happy New Year. Um, how excited are you about this uh, process, uh, being that you guys had to watch the playoffs last year in that bubble situation? So how excited are you that you guys can start with everyone else this year? No, um, the playoff bubble was, was a little different, um, I think, for, for those guys that were in it. Um, you know, this year it's a new season, fresh start, and just trying to work our way through camp, uh, you know, with, with all these different um, things that, that COVID has caused our team to, to have to go through. So, um, but yeah, definitely excited to be back uh, on the ice with the guys. Shang? Hey, Vander, good to see you again. Good to see you. I uh, wanted to uh, ask you uh, first, um, you know, with uh, Jumbo leaving, uh, you know, there's a possible uh, a vacancy at alternate captain. Uh, Bob said that, you know, he isn't sure if he, you know, who's going to fill it or if he even is going to fill it. But, you know, is that something that uh, a goal of yours, you know, something that you would like uh, to be selected for, if not now, but, you know, in the future? Well, um, you know, it's definitely uh, nice to be recognized. Um, you know, with a letter for sure. Um, something that uh, you know definitely gives you a, a little bit of a boost and uh, makes you feel appreciated. But um, you know, I'm a I'm a leader no matter what. So that's just the way I look at it. And uh, close to a training camp, uh, you know, there was some stuff on social media with you and the Pauls. Uh, is that something that just you know you're not thinking about anymore? It's hockey time. That was just kind of off season kind of uh, you know stuff. I think about a lot of things. Okay, so that's not something that, that you're worried about anymore, though. We'll see what happens. Okay, thank you, Vander. Josh? Hey, now that you guys have been down there a few days, just what, what's the experience like um, being in the situation? How, how are you approaching the you know, long period of time you're going to have sort of being on the road and being, being in this? Yeah, it's um, you know we're gonna we're gonna camp here for two weeks and then uh, we're on the road for two weeks, so it's gonna be a, a long time away from uh, home, which is difficult. But um, hopefully, it gives us the best opportunity to uh, be able to play our home games at home, actually, and um, you know have a have a as much of a normal season as possible uh, from that standpoint. Are you guys, I know talking to some of the 49er players who are going through went through a similar thing. They were talking about how they didn't really have a lot of opportunity to bond together because of. The rules they had are you guys having are you able to to do some teammate bonding stuff or is it mostly just on the ice in your room things like that yeah i think that's pretty much that's what it is um you know i know we're all together here in a remote place um but yeah i mean there's just because of covid you know it's recommended that we try to stay as uh Far away from each other as possible, as weird as that, as that sounds. But uh, you know, you know, we we see each other enough in meetings and whatnot. So I think guys guys enjoy just having a little bit of downtime to themselves. So um, you know, we'll see how long this lasts. Hopefully, like I said, it's just uh, the month, and um, we don't have to worry about this moving forward after that. Dan Rosen. Yeah, Vander, uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, two different questions for you. Number one, um, we just had Donato up here. He was talking about a line that you're on with him and Tommy Hurdle. Um, we don't know what lines are going to be when you guys start out, but, you know, you can sink your teeth into what they are now. What do you think is the potential of that type of line, if that's the case? Yeah, um, it's it's uh, tough to tell right now. I mean, I've obviously played with Tommy a lot, so I know him. Uh, just getting to know Ryan um, and – Try to f see what uh, what he does really well. You know, I can tell you he's a he's a pretty good shot, and um, you know he's not afraid to to get in there. But it's you know we're only in day two of practice, and that's really all it's been. So once you maybe get into some of the more uh, game like situations and the scrimmages later in camp, it would be uh, maybe a little easier to answer that question. But you know, obviously going in hopeful and, and hoping that we can uh, you know whatever the lines are, create chemistry with uh, each other. And the other thing. I wanted to ask about the way sorry you cut out there Dan teams a lot whether it's the California teams Vegas whatever maybe you're gonna you're gonna be 
teams a lot, which is a little this t- second half of the season when you're playing at each other for the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time, you know? Yeah, sorry, you were cutting out there, but I think that is it just your question is what's it going to be like playing the same teams? Yeah, rivalries. Yeah, I can't hear you. How do they develop, you know? Sorry, how does who develop? Can you hear him? I, I, can't, I can't hear anything. Connection with a little wonky there. Hopefully you can hear this. I don't no, know if you can. I can hear you now. Nod your head if you can. Okay. The question I'm asking is just how do you think it's going to develop in terms of the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time you're playing the same team? Is it going to be a little bit, you know, more emotion? Do you expect the rivalries to develop that maybe aren't normally there even? Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting. I, I mean, it's uh... – I think there's there's some periods of time in the schedule where you're playing a team four times in a row. So um, it's kind of going to be like a little mini playoff series. So um, it'll be interesting to see how not only our team, but kind of the league approaches it uh, going into those those cities and and playing against those teams. And, um, you know, you're going to have to probably try to have a bit more of a playoff mentality in terms of trying to wear the teams down, knowing that you're playing certain guys each and every night. So um, it'll be probably a bit of a learning experience for everybody moving forward. Michael? All right, Evander, with all the restrictions going on in Santa Clara County affecting the Niners, you guys, and even Stanford, uh, how does that affect you as a Canadian with your family still up in Canada? How have you been able to at least see them or contact them or – How's it work with, with Canada having restrictions against us? Yeah, I, I mean, I've uh, I've been up to Vancouver a couple of times throughout uh, the last couple or last ten months here, so um, been able to to go up there. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, like I said, COVID's affecting everybody. Um, it's it's something that hopefully is coming to an end soon, and you know, we see some positive. Uh, headlines out in the, in the in the media with with the vaccine, so so hopefully uh, you know we can stay vigilant and 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 stay on top of this uh, in the right way and get through this together and and move on from it uh, going forward. But you know it's 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 been tough on everybody, and, and like I said, you know we're the only team here uh, having our training camp in in another place, so it's it's a little bit more of a unique situation for us. Curtis. Hi, Evander. Thank you for doing this today. Um, you just touched on this, but you're one of a handful of guys on the team who are, who are brand new dads. Um, how are you kind of coping in being away from, from your family right now? Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, different. My wife was joking around. She's like, oh, you're probably going to love it for the first couple of days just because I'll be getting some sleep. And I couldn't really argue with her there, but um, it's it's definitely going to be a long period of time. And, you know, being at home and being with my family for the last 10 months, which is probably something I'll, I won't experience for a long time. Uh, again, will uh, you know, it was nice. And, you know, being around uh, my daughter every day was, was great, uh, especially in her early months. And um, it's definitely going to be a, a big change moving forward. I know, especially for, for some of the other guys like Tommy and, and Steph too. The Hockey Diversity Alliance, you guys announced or recognized a little bit, you know, Jasper Weatherby as Sharks, prospect for what he did in a college game not too long ago how much did that mean to you guys just to just to see a college player uh, make that kind of statement yeah no I, I think you know we wanted to recognize uh not only him but uh many different uh players and people um in the game of hockey that have that have been uh pioneers in in that area and um you know we're really looking forward to uh these next couple of weeks with some um, some good partnerships uh, that we're going to be announcing pretty soon. Yeah, I was just going to ask, what are, you know, obviously the NHL partnership didn't work out. Are there certain things that you guys are concentrating on now with even without the league? Well, yeah, yeah, we have some, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll have some announcements in the next couple of weeks in terms of um, some of the partners that uh, we're going to be partnering with. Um, and they're, they're, they're big, big partnerships. Um, a lot of them uh, also partners of the NHL, which is uh, 
a funny, funny thing.